Princeton, New Jersey. Um, this morning before we start our testimonial period, um, I thought I'd read a prayer. Usually I write my own. Uh, this morning I thought it would be interesting to, to read a book or a prayer from the Book of Common Prayer from the Episcopal Church, um, just as a change of pace. Please pray with me. Uh, Eternal God, in whose perfect kingdom no sword is drawn but the sword of righteousness, no strength known but the strength of love, so mightily spread about your spirit that all people may be gathered under the banner of the Prince of Peace as children of one Father, to whom dominion and glory now and forever. Amen. Um, I'll start with a brief testimony and then I'll move, I'll, I'll invite anyone who wants to share, uh, to share theirs. Uh, this morning, I'm in the middle of finals week. Um, so that's been a lot and, and we're coming to the end of a long semester with how much, uh, with the pandemic and classes and everything else, it's been, it's been a grind to get through, but, uh, this field ed placement has certainly been a blessing. Um, but also this morning before we went live and before uh, some of you hopped on the Zoom call, I was mentioning uh, the sunrise. Um, and I've been very conscious of the small blessings and the small ways that God shows up in my life, like sunrises. And earlier this fall, there was a there's a tree out my window that was just bright red for, and the leaves stayed on for over a month, um, which brought me a lot of joy and, and made sitting in this small bedroom, uh, I guess it's not that small, but um, all day doing work um, and not getting to see my friends and not getting to be at Witherspoon itself. Um, those small blessings have, have kept me going and, and carried me through. And it's been certainly a blessing and I give thanks to God for it. I'm just gonna jump in here because I've been bursting <laughs> to do this. And I've been trying to figure out, now how am I gonna say all of this? I don't even know that, you know, I, always, I never feel I can find the right words. But um, I just want to give testimony about the value of the relationship I have with my younger sister. Her name is Lynette, and today is her birthday. Yay! <laughs> yes. <laughs> she is five years younger than me, uh, and in many years, um, she is a lot older than me because the way, you know, we lived our lives differently. And, um, so she enriches my life, my life. She is solid. She is just the, the most profound blessing. Um, and it hurts like all get out that I can't be in Texas with her this week. Um, but even with the pandemic, it's like, it's, we, you know, we're going to have a birthday party call tonight. I can't wait. I'm going to get all my work done. I sent all her gifts in the mail and she promised to wait so we could open them together tonight. And um, she's just, we've been there for each other. I mean, we've just been there for each other. No matter what, there, we had, um, each of us have had two really significant, I mean, major, major, major events in our lives that was difficult for us to come come out about. And um, she told me her secret first. And, and then I, and, and when it was time for me to come clean, I told her my secret first before anyone else. And the unconditional love was was present without a doubt, and um, you know, all day yesterday I was thinking about our childhood, 
and things, the way we played together. Uh, I remember the day my father picked me up from school and told me she had been born. Um, when I went off to college, before I went off to college, she and I shared a bedroom. And my mother told me that she had to move people around in the bedrooms in the house because she was too distraught. She couldn't be in that room without me. That's how much I meant to her, and I didn't know that until then. But all of these years later, there is no doubt that she's, next to me, she's the most important person in my life. And, and um, I could just, I could take the whole time talking about how I'm clear that we love each other and the ways that that, uh, the action behind that, that, that statement. There's plenty of evidence. So thank you for letting me just blabber on about how much I love my sister, Lynette. It's not to say I don't love my other siblings, but we do have a special relationship. And I thank God. Amen. 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 Well, as Reverend always says, I'm always praying for someone else. Well, <laughs> I have someone this morning that I want us to pray for. She's uh, my younger son's mother-in-law, and um, she and I get along very well together. And people are, are kind of surprised because they said usually mother-in-laws don't get along well. So she's visited me. I've visited her Um and um, we also went with the family to uh, vacation together at Martha's Vineyard in 2018. But she is sick. So I wish I'm praying for healing for Laura Ferris. So... Good morning. I think I'm going to take this opportunity to again uh, thank God for this prayer community. I so much appreciate what you have given me over the last, what, eight months or so. Uh, just waking up and knowing that I'm going to be in your company keeps me going. I think our pastor is wonderful, and we are very, very blessed to have him at, as a leader. I also want to thank God for all the joy and pleasure I received in my birthday. It's a very funny thing because, you know, birthdays shouldn't matter as much. And I uh, generally, you know, our birthdays fall on a working day, which mine did. But it was just a wonderful reminder of all the incredible blessings that I have. So, I'm, I just want to be grateful today and to say thank you. Thanks to you and thanks to our pastor and thanks to Nicole, who is adorable. I think I really want to meet her in three dimensions. Mm -hmm. So I hope she's well. It, that You know, this prayer community gave me that opportunity. I love you all, but you know, Nicole and I have been in, in touch I, she strikes me as a, an extraordinary human being. So thank you. Thank you all. Amen. Good morning, family. Oh, I apologize for being a little late this morning, but I had an early morning uh, text from uh, one of my choir members who is a part of our prayer warrior group. And uh, she said about 4.30 this morning, her daughter's husband had to rush her to the hospital uh, and uh, don't know the diagnosis yet, but she was in severe pain. 
Uh, so I'm asking you uh, in the name of Jesus this morning to lift up Shonda Beverly is her daughter's name. She has three children and my choir member's name, prayer warrior's name is Linda Wilson. But we are praying now uh, for Shonda that the diagnosis is going to come back that it is something that the hospitals and the doctors can take care of because Jesus has already been there and touched her. So we're claiming her healing in the name of Jesus. And I ask that you continue to lift up my choir member and prayer warrior, uh, Marcia Saunders, uh, who has been diagnosed with COVID. We are continuing to bombard heaven and call on the name of Jesus for his mercy, for his healing power, and for peace of mind. So please keep them in prayer this morning. I just want to say thank you, God, for this prayer community, for each and every one of you. You are such a blessing and such a source of strength to all of us, and especially that I know Monday through Friday when I wake up that after I talk with Jesus, I'm going to talk with you. And I'm so grateful. I am so very grateful. God bless each and every one of you. Stay healthy. Stay safe. Wear your mask. Wash your hands. Do everything so that when this next Advent season comes around in 2021, we're gonna all get together and celebrate. I'm claiming it right now. Thank you. God bless you. Amen. Good morning, it's Rebecca. Mm -hmm. I wanted to thank everybody for their prayers for my son. He's back. Praise God. I don't know whether that's good or bad, but he's back. Uh, he was up in the middle of the night making East Rolls. He is definitely back. I just want to thank you. Craig Campbell is back. Amen. Rebecca. Praise God. We should thank all who prayed for my friend's sister. She had three tumors removed and she is doing well. She's with um, Penny, uh, who's taking care of her. Uh, I also want to pray for Pauline Brown. I'm her deacon and um, trying to get her a telephone that works and that she can use. She's without a telephone and can't communicate with others. Um, also for Isa, I'm her deacon. And I just sent a card to um, Mother Amelia. And uh, I pray for Isa and her family. And I pray for all of us here. And I don't say too much about what I do, but um, I just want you to know I'm still working for the Lord and I'm working for those in the community, for the children. And um, I just want all to pray because I, I, this is the first time in my life I've been alone when my mom passed. Um, I'm the only one here, but I do have family. I do have friends. And I want to thank you all who I see every morning. God be with you. Amen. I want to thank you, Shirley, for all that you do for us and for the young people and for those in need. It, it's a great blessing. Thank you, Reverend McGalpin. I appreciate that. And I will continue to thank God for the blessings that I receive for my health and for the support that I receive from my friends and from the, the you and the church. God bless you. I'll also um, share Thanksgiving for for this for this prayer group and for the opportunity to be connected and, and connecting uh, with all of you. 
um, uh, you know, testimony being, you know, witness to what we're, what we're going through, what we're going to also, um, I, uh, my daughter, I, and I have been, um, have been doing a pretty intense, uh, fast over the course of the last, uh, this is 11 days, um, of, of really just doing water, uh, and, and occasionally doing juice, um, but a uh, fast from food over the course of the last 11 days. We started it on the first day of Advent uh, on November the 29th. And, you know, and just to give a testimony that we're, we're alive and well, and um, we're making it through and to, um, you know, the, uh, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm excited, you know, Aya has, has fasted with me before, but this is the first time I think that she's fasted in this kind of way for this long. Um, and our plan is to fast until um, the end of Advent. So that's December 24th. So I don't even know how long, how much longer that is, but it's a, <laughs> it's, it's a, it's a while. It's a couple of weeks. Uh, we have a couple of weeks more to go. Um, and um so just please, you know, keep us in prayer and, and keep her in prayer in particular. She reminds me all the time whenever I check on her and she wants to vent about how terrible it is. Um, mm -hmm. going through this fast and I've been doing this a long time. So um, I've been I've been fasting long fast since I was, uh, I don't know, probably 20 years old. So almost 30 years. Uh, and uh, so th th this is still something that's very, very new uh, for her, um, but you know that that the Lord is 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 bringing bringing me through, and and also just uh, again sharing uh, Thanksgiving. You know, even though I I feel out of sorts because my uh, daughter Lewa and son Truth are uh, away um, geographically in terms of one being in D.C. and the other being in and Tennessee that, you know, that I have the opportunity to, to check on them and to, to see how they're doing um, and to, to, to get good reports. You know, Lewa is finishing up um, this week or next week, uh, uh, her semester in school, which should be, I guess, her next to last semester that she has uh, before she is finished and ready to graduate. Um, you know, truth is, is, uh, doing well. I've given my, my testimony on him before in terms of his, his, uh, his academic performance this first semester. And I'm just, I'm thankful about that. And um, just encouraged to continue to try to, to look more deeply at things, um, uh, relationships, at situations, at circumstances. And I'm thankful that even in the midst of, uh, COVID-19, and it's been hard to find things to testify about amidst everything else, um, that uh, if nothing else, I've had the opportunity to do a lot more reading. Um, and so I'm able to, uh, I mean, I was already a pretty, pretty, pretty diligent in terms of my, my study before, but, you know, probably reading, you know, two, three times more uh, in terms of hours a week. Uh, than I was before. And that's been really a blessing, uh, the things I've been able to explore. Um, I, I am also keeping lifted up in prayer, uh, uh, Isa. Um, you know, it's so difficult. You all know that we've been praying for her mother, uh, Amelia, uh, who had, had been sick and had been struggling for some time. And, you know, we had been praying for our mothers. And and I guess I can share this as my last testimony. It was it was really difficult because Isa had asked me to um, uh, to come um, to come to the house to 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 pray uh, with her mother um, at the uh, at the end of last week, and I, I really wrestled with it because uh, there were a lot of people in the house, people had come from New York and from all over, you know, who had been there, who were there to be with the mother. Um, and, 
you know, I, I, I have made this commitment that even though God has blessed me to be asymptomatic of COVID-19 and, and I don't believe I have COVID-19, that I would do everything that I could do to keep, you know, other people safe, you know, not wanting to carry anything to them. And I had, you know, I have been to two protests, you know, just in the past week, there's, there's a, a group of right-wing folks who had been um, harassing and terrorizing a, a Chinese dissident family in West Windsor. And uh, I had been going out uh, to their home and being with them uh, and being supportive of them in counter protests to this group that, you know, some uh, this billionaire from China and Steve Bannon, you know, they had basically financed these things, attacking these Chinese dissidents, pro-democracy folks around the country. It's a whole nother story. But I mean, I had been out twice and just in the past week uh, in, in public protest. And so I didn't, re- you know, I really didn't feel comfortable with uh, going into the house. And so, you know, I prayed and I prayed and I prayed and I reached out to colleagues and, you know, asked them for advice in terms of what um, I could do and what I should do. And um, ultimately we ended up doing um, a, a Zoom call on Sunday night uh, with the whole family. Uh, and, um, and, and, it, and it was really a blessing. And Isa had laid out a whole service and I was, you know, she had hymns and scripture readings and all kinds of stuff. And, um, but, you know, we had, we had, I don't know, probably seven, seven, eight people who were on the call, including her mother and her mother was sat up when she heard me pray. And I was able to, to, to lay hands on the, on the screen. And, um, and so, you know, I, I just give thanks to God that, um, you know, that, that I, that I, that I listened uh, and I was prayerful about it. And it wasn't just, you know, it's, it's easy to say that we should always pray about things, but um, periodically we get reminded practically of how that works. Uh, and, uh, and that, um, that was, that was something that I did commit to. And I was thankful that uh, though, um, Mama Amelia transitioned uh, early on um, Monday morning, um, or maybe it was Tuesday morning. Uh, my days are bl- really blending. Um, I think it was Monday morning um, that I I was able to uh, uh, call and connect and pray with them. So I give thanks to God for that. Um, also lifting up uh, Lisette uh, Gonzalez Sosa, our field education intern, her daughters are going to get COVID-19 tests today. Um, And, um, you know, she was diagnosed positive last week and um, we are praying for her and with her and she seems to be well of spirits, but, you know, she has an amazing spirit anyway. Whenever you talk to Lisette, she's filled with energy and I'm just looking forward to her testimony. Amen. She will be sharing once she, she makes it through. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, God. Yes. Good morning, everyone. Um, this is Kim, and I'm new to the group. And I want to give God thanks for the group. It has really been a blessing to be a part of your prayers, your prayer sessions. And um, I also want to give God thanks because for a couple of things. One, my daughter is graduating on Sunday with a master's degree in educational policy. So I give God praise for that. And I also thank God because when I think about his plan, when I think about the fact that the creator of the universe has made the decision to use ordinary people for his plan. It just blows me away. People like me who are flawed and, you know, disobedient and, uh, you know, want my own way and but yet he chooses us, he has chosen us and he didn't have to, he could have done anything. Blown away by that and I'm very grateful that God loves us 
and has chosen us and me in particular to be a part of his plan of redemption. I, I, that just blows me away. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm asking for prayer um, for myself and my husband. We both, he just told me actually, but I have had sniffles and a headache for the past two days. And I don't think I don't think it's COVID. It's it's so funny. We we now everything is COVID. If you have the slightest thing is COVID, but a, the common cold still exists. So it feels like I have a cold. I'm 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 praying that it's nothing more than that. But I am going to go get tested. So I'm just asking for prayer for both of us. He just came in and told me that he feels congested. So I'm just asking for prayer for both of us. Thank you. Amen. Amen. And just welcome, Kim. It is great to have you uh, to join us. You have an amazing voice, too. You need to do like voiceovers for something. <laughs> <laughs> that is part of my plan uh, when I retire to do voiceovers. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Well, it's always getting close to 7 30. Um, is anyone else out of um, to to get this morning? Why your microphone is, is garbled? Just as like Kim's power of voiceover, you spoke with the high <laughs> pitched voice. <laughs> um, I have one other thing I'd like to um, say this morning. I've been thinking this for a while. And um, so the Spirit just moved me this morning to give testimony to the beautiful um, relationship that I witnessed between a father and a daughter that I've never seen anything like this before, and that is Reverend Lukata and, and Aya. I, I uh, marvel at their connection, and um, I'm just happy for Aya. <laughs> and she has that kind of relationship with her father. She will realize if she doesn't, she probably understands that now, but there's going to come a time in her life, I, I, I Maybe not. Maybe I'm just reflecting on my own. But <laughs> uh, there's a specialness there that yeah. I notice, and and um, and it's it's a blessing for me to see that relationship. Thank you, God. Thank you, thank you. my daughter. Yeah. Praise God. Praise God. All right, can you guys hear me? Cool. I'm not sure what's going on with my computer's mic. As soon as uh, Reverend Lucata said that I was having trouble, I got a notification that my microphone wasn't working at all for some reason, but we'll go through my headphones. Um, so does anyone have anything else they'd like to share? <laughs> Right, I will. Um, one of our former church members, Mary Shropshire, she and her husband moved to Georgia, I guess, maybe 15, almost 20 years ago. And I was just speaking to her yesterday. She gave me a call. And uh, Mary says she's just feeling very stressful about situations that she's having there. So just pray that uh, Mary will find a way to relieve, I guess, herself of the stress that she's under. And of course, some physical uh, problems also. So for her health, I would say I'm praying for her health.
I, I, I want to add one other thing, and I'm sorry to, to, to pile on here, because I, I, I was just, my mind isn't always clear here, uh, the clearest. Um, I had a meeting, I had a meeting last night late uh, after our Presbytery meeting with a group of community organizers and activists from Trenton, um, uh, Trenton Anti-Violence Coalition and uh, some other groups. And, and, and really just for us to, to never forget in our daily prayers, you know, what's happening uh, in our capital city. Um, we, we, we are at, at, at 39 murders in Trenton. Uh, and, you know, and I raised the question, what do we need to do to keep it from getting to 40 before the end of this year? Um, and um, we're, 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 we're really struggling. And, you know, and, and, it's, a, and it's largely a, a secular group. Well, I, I don't know what, what everybody's faith background is or prayer background is, but I know what we gotta do. I know where we have to start at least. I know that we have to be praying about it. I know, I know, I know, I know. As much as people, uh, particularly in the, in, the, in the political and activist community are dismissive of the utility of prayer, I know that's where it starts. And, um, and, and, I, and I know people have to be praying um, and then listening uh, to what it is that God is telling us to do. And I know that I haven't been praying enough uh, about and for Trenton and then listening and doing what God has told me to do. I mean, it's one thing to, to pray prayers of lament um, where, we, where we bemoan you know, what's happening in, in Trenton and the violence that's happening and, and escalating all over the state in the midst of COVID-19. But it's something else to, to, to be in prayer and then to be listening and then to act based on what God tells us to do. And so I just ask for you to, to join with me in that kind of fervent prayer. Um, I, I, do, I don't know what it is that we need to do long-term. Uh, and for the first time I heard people like declaring that there's nothing we can do. There's nothing we can do. We can't stop it. I said, no, 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 no. Nothing is impossible for God. And this is not God's will uh, and God's way. And um, so I'm lifting up the families in particular. I know that I, you know, I, I have not met, connected with, prayed for, prayed with a single one of the fam 39 families that have been touched by uh, the murders this year in 2020. And I feel guilty about that. And I, and I feel like I need to confess that um, because I also know that that is a part of what God led me to do before. And frequently when I ask God, what should I do? God's answer is do what I already told you to do. Um, and, um, and God told me to do that before. And, and so I, I just ask for, for, for your prayers for the, for, for the city of Trenton, for all of the families and communities have been impacted by the violence. Uh, there have been children, uh, there have been um, you know, brothers, uh, you know, eight-year-old and a 16-year-old, you know, um, there, there, there have been women, uh, men, older people, younger people, and, um, and, and we, we really need to be uh, in fervent prayer for the city of Trenton. All right. Anything else? Any last last words before I pray us out of here? All right. Lord, we come to you this morning um, having heard each other's testimonies and having enjoyed each other's community one more morning. Uh, we thank you and we bless you for the opportunities to come together and the opportunities to strengthen each other um, and be strengthened by each other and, and, and be strengthened by you, Lord. Uh, truly, your presence is here every day. Lord, with Sharon, uh, we pray thanksgivings for her sister, uh, whose birthday it is today. Thank you that she's 
she's here and you've blessed the earth with her presence. Um, and thank you for her and Sharon's relationship and how that's blessed Sharon. And um, thank you for how they've been there for each other through thick and thin and supported each other and, and been each other's uh, confider and uh, the person who they can come to and trust and, and receive unconditional love from each other. And Lord, we know that is, that is your love expressed through another person. Um, and we give, we, we give praise for that. Um, thank you for how their love is in action and is actionable and real and felt and heard and seen, Lord. Thank you that their love is a testimony to your love and, and to the rest of us for how we ought love, love our sister and our brother and our neighbor. And Lord, we pray with Barbara for her younger son's mother-in-law who is, who is sick. Uh, her name is Laura Ferris. And we, we pray for healing over her that she might, she might find comfort and healing and return to the way of life she experienced before. And if not that Lord, an, a new, new way of life where she can find blessing and comfort and, and peace. And with Patricia, Lord, we pray Thanksgiving for our prayer community. Um, and thank you for the consistency of this community that has been a rock in the storm of this pandemic for so many um, we're thankful for uh, the blessings that she received on her birthday, and we are thankful for the blessing of her birthday, Lord, that, that, she, that you have blessed the world with her um, and that she has been sustained for another year by you. And Lord, we also thank for the, the connections that have been made and flourished because of the new ways that we interact, Lord, even as we lament how we can't connect with people. Uh, we, we give praise and thanksgiving for, for the new people that we've come in contact with that we wouldn't have otherwise had we, had we not been here and, and been in this time. So even while this pandemic is hard, let us not forget the blessings that we see and that we experience. And Lord, we pray for, uh, with Mariamo for Shauna Beverly, who is Linda Wilson's daughter for healing over her. She went to the hospital this morning. We pray for the doctors who care for her, that they may quickly um, find a diagnosis and, and discern what is going on with her body, that she might, she might find comfort and healing. Um, we pray for her speedy recovery and may, may you be present with her and with, with her family and with the healthcare professionals and truly with uh, Shonda's whole community, Lord. And we also continue to pray for uh, her fellow choir member and prayer warrior who has COVID. May she uh, heal and be comforted, give her strength as she fights this virus, give each of us strength as we collectively fight this virus of our world and our our nation strength as we fight this virus um, and we pray with Mariamu for uh, safety for everyone uh, on this prayer call and and may we remember to stay resolute and to stay safe um, as we as we navigate this pandemic and as we out navigate this uh, new structure that we've been under for eight months even though we may be tired of it, Lord, that doesn't mean we can't give up on it, give us strength as we continue to push through. And Lord, we pray thanksgivings and blessings um, for Rebecca and the Campbell family, whose uh, son is back. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. And Lord, we pray with Shirley um, for her friend, who, uh, who had surgery on her three tumors. And um, we pray that she, is, she does well and is continuing to do well and, and continues to heal. We thank you for the miracles of modern medicine and for 
for the ways you provide healing to us through those and the ways you have blessed us through the minds of so many wildly intelligent people who are able to sustain life, Lord. And may we remember that these are truly blessings from you and not ways to escape you or escape the life that you've given us, but ways to live that life more fully. Um, and Lord, we also pray for the people who surely serves as a deacon and as a friend and as a community leader. Um, but Lord, we also, with David and with the rest of the community, pray thanksgiving for Shirley and for all the ways that she serves and blesses us and her whole world. Um, thank you for how she leads the young people and how she leads as a deacon. Uh, thank you for her kind and caring heart, which seems to, to always have more to give uh, and for how that's been a blessing for all of us. And, and we feel it every day and, and it is truly your work, God. And Lord, we pray for David's friends uh, and the ways they have been able to stay in touch uh, with his community and with each other, even while they're learning new ways to communicate. Um, thank you that, that they have the opportunity to and the opportunity to stay safe while staying in touch. And Lord, we pray with uh, Reverend Lucada and Aya as they have continued their fast. Um, we pray for strength and clarity and perseverance as they, as they go through this challenging time in order to, to find clarity and connection with you and with each other. Uh, Lord, we especially pray for Aya because this, she's, she's new to the, um, to the fasting world. Uh, thank you for, for her strength and for the ways that she can be guided by her father uh, and, and the ways that they strengthen each other, Lord. Lord, we also pray, pray for Lewa and Truth, um, who are not at home right now. May they, may they return safely. And we pray for um, Lucada and Kay as they miss their children and, and look forward to them coming home at some point, hopefully soon. Um, may they find comfort in you, Lord. Um, and Lord, with Rodan Lucada, we're thankful for that even in the midst of COVID, there are still blessings. Uh, and uh, we, in particular, we thank you for the, the blessing of doing more reading. Uh, and we pray for, for Isa's mother, Amelia, who, who transitioned on, on Monday morning. Lord, we pray for her spirit. Welcome to Welcome her into your presence, Lord. Um, and we pray for her family, those she has left behind. Um, may, they, may they find comfort in you and find peace in you as they transition into this new relationship that they have with their mother. Um, Lord, we understand that, that while she is separated, she is not gone. Um, and we thank you that that you have given us life everlasting um, and that even while she's not here physically and we can't uh, communicate with her directly, we know that, that the relationship is not ended. It is merely changed. Uh, and we look forward to the days when we are all reunited in your glory, Lord. Um, Lord, we are thankful for the ways that this community supports each other uh, even in the midst of a pandemic that we were able to zoom in and pray for each other and, and set up services for our mothers and for our brothers and for our sisters and for our fathers that we, that we can support each other and we can um, give each other strength um, as, as we go through trials and we go through tribulations um, while also being able to keep each other safe. Uh, we also play, pray for Lisette, who has COVID, and for for her sis, her daughters who have been with her. Um, and we pray for Lisette's community that they remain safe and healthy, uh, and 
And for those who have caught COVID, Lord, we, we pray for their healing and uh, we pray for their comfort. Lord, we pray uh, with Kim, thanksgivings for this group, um, thanksgivings for what we have uh, been able to create here and what you have created in us, Lord, that, that we can come together and support each other. Um, and we give thanksgiving and praise for her daughter who is graduating with a master's in education management. Uh, we thank you for her mind and the way that she molds the minds of children and uh, guides those who mold children's minds. Um, and thank you, Lord, for the ways that uh, you have chosen to work in us and through us. Uh, even as we see ourselves as broken, we realize that while, while we may see them as broke, as, as cracks and as chips and breaks, you see them as, as ways to fit the keyhole, Lord, and ways that we are, we are made perfect in our own imperfections, that, that in every way we see, we see ourselves as imperfect. You see us as perfect for the role that you have put us in, Lord. And may we draw strength in that. May we draw hope in that. Um, and may we remember that it is it is you who works through us, not us who works on our own. So may we find comfort in that. And Lord, with Sharon, uh, we give thanksgiving for Reverend Lucada and Aya's special father-daughter relationship, that it is a, um, an example to all of us and, and a, a blessing to all of us that we may witness uh, the love between a father and his daughter. And Lord, we pray with Barbara for uh, Mary Sharp Shire, who is uh, feeling stressed about things going on in Georgia. And we also pray for her health. May she, she rest in your strength and rest in your comfort um, and give, give her trials and, and her problems over to you, Lord, that you might heal and you might comfort and you might... Uh, you might bless. And God, with, with Reverend Lucada, we pray over Trenton uh, this morning. We pray for those 39 uh, victims of murder who, who have left this earth and returned to you, Lord. Um, we pray for their families. We pray uh, uh, peace over their family and, and, and bring your presence and, and your comfort to them as they grieve the loss of their loved one. Um, Lord, we also pray for shalom peace over Trenton as a whole and for healing and reconciliation within the whole community. Um, that there might be no more murder, Lord, and that there might be no more violence. Uh, and Lord, we, we cry over the violence that has escalated throughout the state this year and, and throughout this, this time of uncertainty and this time of anger and frustration. Um, Lord, quiet our souls, uh, quiet our hearts, Give us clarity of mind and give us love for our neighbor. Um, we pray for renewal and rejuvenation and for strength of and strengthening of hope, uh, even in the midst of this darkness, Lord. Uh, may the city as a whole turn toward you and toward your voice in order to find comfort and to find reconciliation and rejuvenation and also to find a way out of the violence, Lord, and, and a way out of the violent circles and cycles that, that perpetuate hate and, and grief and sadness. Lord, we pray that not only over Trenton, but over all of South Central New Jersey, over all of New Jersey as a whole. Lord, we pray that over our nation and over our world. May we turn toward you and toward your strength. And in that find find joy and find renewal and, 
and find love, Lord, love for you and love for our neighbor and, and a way out of the violence and the oppression that we find in our world. It is only in your strength that we can do anything and yet in your strength, we can do everything. And for that, we give you thanks every day. In your holy name, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Wyatt. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Wyatt. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank Have you. a great rest of the week. Thank you all. Thank, Thank you all. Mm -hmm. God Good morning, Isa. I know we all extend our deepest condolences and sympathy. Well, thank you very much. Praying for you. Thank you. Thank you for the prayers. Thank you. How thank you, you very doing? much. Thank you How for your love. Mm -hmm. Thank you for loving my mother and respecting her each time she came there. Mm -hmm. She rests in peace. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And we're all here. The family's here. And um, I'm still putting things together. But I just want to thank you as a, as a congregation, as a church, for how much love and prayers you, you poured into this, into the life of, of my mother. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. We're very, very grateful. And Reverend Lucata has never stopped praying. And he he prayed for her on Sunday, and she and he told her, well, he was not as loud as T.D. Jakes, and she <laughs> smiled <laughs> and tried to 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 respond, you know, and uh, and it was a very nice touching moment there. And she passed on uh, yesterday, yesterday uh, in the morning at five five o'clock or just after five o'clock. Mm -hmm. in her sleep she was not awake very peaceful nice but thank you so very much thank you god bless all of you bless you all. God really you. really god bless all of you. Nice. we're a great nice. church and great loving spiritual people and thank you for your love thank you for your blessings thank you for loving me and accepting me in the church i mean you didn't <laughs> you know you didn't have to to uh, nice. you know, i'm just a congregant Thank you so much. Thank you. And God bless all of you. God bless you. And thank you for allowing us to be a part of your journey. <laughs> thank, you. Love you. thank you God so much. You. Have a blessed day. And you all. <laughs> Shirley, I'm going to call you in just a minute. Is that okay? Yes. Okay. Have a blessed day, everyone. And you all right. Yes. Yeah. Everyone have a blessed day. We'll see you tomorrow. Really? Wednesday Bible study. Yep. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Hello, everyone. Blessings. Wait, Blessings. Sharon. Thank you. Bye.